Here we have a spotted mulga snake. This snake was only described as science in 1982, named after Harry Butler and restricted to the goldfields of WA. It's a member of the black snake group. They flatten themselves right out when they're pulling in the heat in the mornings. He now knows I'm around and he's going to move off. What an amazing looking animal. Anyone that says snakes aren't attractive animals, they haven't seen too many in the wild. Look at that. We just see if we can get it in the bag. What an amazing looking snake. Ah, pop. Come on, have a look. Have a look. Ah. Yeah, they like these black bags. We don't jump around too much. So I'll just get in there to get away. Look at that. Terrific. Ah. In any area, there's an assemblage of small venomous snakes that most people are unfamiliar with. In fact, here in the gold fields... Aha! This is an adult snake called a monk snake. Venomous, if it bites, causes local swelling, unlikely to be serious, but it can debilitate the person bitten because of the degree of local swelling. The swelling can extend right up the arm and you cannot bend your arm at the elbow and you'll have a hand that looks like a leg of lamb. Oop, I'm not going to let him bite me. There you are, go back under your rock. No worries. Yeah, most of Australia's more venomous snakes they usually feed on lizards. There are a couple that take lizards' eggs. Although small, with children, you've got to be exceptionally careful because the smaller body size means the effects of the venom is going to be far more severe. The other problem that humans have, we're not genetic clones. That small venomous snake, like a monk snake or a rodent snake, can for, cause far more severe reactions in some people than others. In fact, honeybees are our deadliest venomous animal primarily because of anaphylaxis, a severe allergic reaction. You may, although you may not know it, be allergic to an allergen within the venom of one of the small venomous snakes. You pick it up thinking it's too small to be dangerous, get bitten by it, and have a very severe life-threatening reaction. The message is, leave them all alone, that's what I reckon. I'm at the Mount Keefe operation. I'm here for the next few days running snake management courses at the village hall. Yeah, we're running the catching component out on the oval. You'll notice the hazard tape. Hopefully that'll exclude the spectators from getting in the way. When running snake management courses on site, it's important that the snakes, the training aids, are securely housed somewhere and workers on site they're aware of where those snakes are. Notice the sign? Danger, do not enter. When a snake enters a building, it usually finds somewhere to hide, gravitates up against the wall and moves behind any piece of equipment that might be nearby. Provides it with a bit of security. When you enter the building to go looking for the snake, work your way around the wall till you find the snake usually behind a cupboard, behind any piece of equipment, often up against the wall. Rarely will a snake be found out in the middle of the room. It'll be up against the wall, usually in the room with the most junk in it. If it's a storage room or something like that adjacent to the snake, that's where the snake will be. In this case, we've got a snake, a snake that's just been spotted. We've been called in to come and catch it, and that's what we're about to do. Notice I'm behind the gear.
snake's up against the wall. I can use this extension of my hand to get the snake directed into the bag. This dark bag will provide it with a bit of refuge eventually. Not normally a problem. Look at that. Beautiful. Now we've got the snake in the bag. Just get rid of the torch. Now I've got the snake in the bag. We've got to tie the bag without taking a bite through the, through the bag. And I've taken a bite through the bag previously. Three days in a comb as a result of a bite through the bag. I'm going to use my hook now, the shaft of my hook, put it over my bag, pull the bag through. And just remember, at this point in time, if you're outside on uneven ground, make sure, make sure that the shaft is holding the bag flat so that the snake can't come under it. It's not going to be really impressed when you tie the bag with its head up there and you're exposing yourself to a bite. So we tie the bag, no worries. Take the snake straight out and liberate it because if you leave it in the bag, it's a hazard. It's going to stay in the bag because you want to get a positive ID working through the environment department on site. Make sure that you hand the snake in the bag to the environmentalist. If you're going to store the snake, you can take it off the frame. Velcro attachable bags, remember, take it off the frame, put it in a toolbox, put it in a locked locker, somewhere cool. Don't leave it in your vehicle. Leave it in your vehicle, you've got a problem. The problem is, if the snake will overheat, you might as well have hit it on the head with a shovel in the first place because it will die. If you want to get the snake out of the bag, take it to where you're going to liberate it, a nice little vegetated area, undo your tie, let's move this gear out of the way again, undo your tie, get rid of the handle, you don't want your hand down there, find the corners of your bag, which is sewn diagonally, lift the whole thing up, shake it and walk away. No worries. Simple. That's typical defensive behaviour in a brown snake. Elevated forebody, showing the spots on the belly. It's a feint, it's not an intent to do harm, it just wants the cause of its concern to move away. This is your western brown snake, also commonly referred to as guarda or guarda, the snake involved in most fatalities in WA. Not very large, in many cases no larger than a metre, but does pack a punch with its rapid acting procoagulant venoms and also a property in the venom that causes a rapid dilation of blood vessels. Most of Australian snakes are venomous and it's very difficult to identify them. The problem is the colour is so unstable in many species. For example, here we have a ring brown snake Here's a sub-adult ring brown snake. They look like totally different species of snake. In fact, as an adult, it'll be olive green. As juveniles, they're rich reddish brown to pink. Same species, different colours. What about the venomous and non-venomous snakes? Here, we have a death adder and a python. They look very similar. Both got triangular shaped heads. One's highly venomous, one's totally harmless. And what about the rosin snake? Some of you might be familiar with the rosin snake. Rosen snake is a small venomous snake that's not likely to cause any more severe symptoms than a bad bee sting. Well, you might get extreme local swelling, so your arm's no good anymore for a few days. The swelling's so severe you can't see daylight between your fingers, you can't bend your arm at the elbow, no good to the employer like that. The other problem you might have exposing yourself to the venom of a rosin snake is an increased sensitivity. Your body will recognise an allergen within the venom, and next time you get exposed to a similar venom, you might have an anaphylactic reaction. Here we have a little python, a pygmy python. They almost look identical. And considering all these snakes move at night around village areas, workplaces, at night time, subdued light, you can't get a good look at them. Treat them all as bloody dangerous. Leave them alone. If you get bitten by a rose and snake and they swab the bite site, it can give a false positive for Taipan. That'll often cause the medical people to overreact. Keep in mind, pressure and mobilisation. No documented deaths in Australia where people have used a pressure bandage. So if you're bitten by any snake and there's any doubt to its identity, pressure and mobilisation first aid is required. No worries. Just because it looks like a snake doesn't necessarily mean it is a snake. Australia is the home to a broad range of legless lizards. They get much larger than a lot of our smaller venomous snakes. These are hooded scarlyfoots. They get to about 50 centimetres in length, common throughout the goldfields and the Pilbara. 
They have these dark head markings which make them resemble small brown snakes. Totally harmless, but no less scary than a venomous snake to a person that mistakes their identity. A common venomous snake throughout much of Western Australia that causes concern but hasn't got a pugnacious bone in its body of the orange nape snake. Now, the smallest snake involved in the fatality was only 18 centimetres in Australia. These snakes are about 30, 35 centimetres in length. Very attractive little snakes, but no inclination to bite. Although technically venomous, they're the types of snakes that we don't consider of medical significance. Again, they've got dark heads, as many of our small venomous snakes do have. The black on the head of these snakes is broken by an orange bar. Not a pugnacious bone in their body. Feed on lizards, move at night, commonly called moon snakes or orange nape snakes. Now fear of snakes is generally out of proportion to the threat. This is the Aussie King Brown. Last fatality attributed to a King Brown snake was 38 years ago, way back in 1969. If I don't move, the snake won't even know I'm here. If I contact its body, it'll bite as a reflex. You tread on it, it'll bite you. You pick it up, it'll bite you. And it's not real pleasant. You'll have vision problems, violent headache, nauseous, and loss of bowel control within minutes. But the prognosis is pretty positive. You usually survive. Just that you present at the first aid post, and this little sucker's still hanging off your leg. Hey, no worries there. At least they can identify the snake. Let's get him in a bag. No worries. I'm heading for Jundee Gold Mine. About 35 k's from Waluna. Bit over a thousand k's from home. This old falcon will take me anywhere. Most of the mine sites are serviced by road transport, and all the roads are great. I can go to the great sandy desert, I can go to the little sandy desert, I can go to the WA border in the scrub on a well formed up road. It's around mine site villages that most of the accidents happen. People are relaxed and wearing thongs and this is where the snakes head for. The yellow spotted monitor is a common visitor to mine site villages. They like foraging around rubbish bins and other areas where they can pick up a feed. These lizards are natural predators of snakes. So if you've got a large number of these lizards around the village, don't allow them to get access to human waste and they'll feed on the snakes. This lizard can attain 1.8 metres in length. The big ones get the middle-aged spread and they look like crocodiles. Sharp teeth, sharp claws, and the big ones often feed on carrion. If you ever take a bite from one, make sure you clean the wound with an antiseptic solution. And if you haven't had a tetanus booster for some time, it pays to get a tetanus booster. Bacterial infections aren't uncommon after bites from these beasts. The ravens wreak a benefit around these villages as well. 